Party in Balnaslow rose through the ranks of the Fenian movement to the Supreme Council and ended up elected to the British House of Commons and serving as an MP and, and making himself one of the greatest orators of the day. So it's a man who, who both ranked alongside the, the parliamentarians like Parnell and had this side career as a revolutionary. So when I talked to Jane earlier in the week, I began by asking her how influential was John O'Connor Power in the Fenians? He was extremely influential, but we know that the Fenians and the IRB, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, were extremely secretive. And he was known as an enigmatic man, uh, a man of mystery, elusive. Um, so we can't always pin him down. And, I, you know, I, sometimes it was only glimpses I got. But he became their accredited envoy and their foreign representative. And he was also representative uh, for Connacht in the period before 1870. And... He organised a vast organisation of Fenians who backed um, George Moore for, um, as his candidature for the uh, Parliament. And before this, indeed, there had been a rapprochement with the Liberals, an alliance which were, uh, where John Bright had spoken up for the Manchester Martyrs. John Bright was um, Gladstone's uh, man on the Irish question, his advisor. And there's a reason to believe that he kept a close um, link with the Fenians. Also, the Vatican was involved, and Cardinal Manning, who was then Archbishop, was a, a, a very close friend of Gladstone's. And they knew that the Irish question had to be addressed. And they were campaigning uh, for George Moore. It was about the disestablishment of the Anglican Church uh, and amnesty for Irish prisoners. They, they didn't go into the home government question, but in fact, that was uh, part of their agenda. And he stood for election and was elected and became MP for Mayo. And the thing I suppose that surprised me is that he, he established himself as, as a really great orator, one of the great orators. And I was just wondering how good was he and why was he so good without, I suppose, any formal training? Well, we don't know that there was no uh, any formal training. One of my chapters, deal, I, I go to... Um, authors at the time, uh, George Moore and uh, Conan Doyle and Wilkie Collins. And George Moore suggests in his composite uh, figure uh, of, uh, it's not a friendly one, is that he was taken up by, you know, the, a priest. And if he was actually, you know, he, if he was a very clever boy, which he was, and so was, was his brother who became a sergeant major in, in the British Army, uh, they seem to have had a very good education and either there was an extraordinary national school teacher who educated them and they did and they were brought up as Catholics or um, there was a, a, a Catholic priest who took a great interest in them or maybe even the Quakers because uh, John seemed to O'Connor Power I sometimes call him John um, seemed to have a very strong, strong uh, affection for the, the Quaker community who were also uh, strongly involved in, 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 in the Irish uh, uh, cause and he became involved in the policy of obstructionism. Yes, he did. Yes, he, he did. He, he uh, well, they had, uh, the Irish party earlier had, uh, you know, decades earlier had used obstruction, but they, they got it to a fine art and there were a few of them involved and uh, they were extremely lively and they make, made life hell for the, for, uh, the British MPs who, who, could, who could not advance legislation while the Irish... Uh, delayed, uh, used delaying tactics sometimes for two or three days at a time. And what was his relationship like with Charles Stuart Parnell? Because it, it seems to have been difficult. Well, uh, they brought in Charles Stuart Parnell uh, to the party, the IRB, Patrick Egan and himself, I believe, uh, because they needed a front man, um, a gentleman. And I think Conor Power. Uh, his role was to educate Parnell about the, about the Irish problems and, and to introduce him to the Irish community in Britain and in Ireland. And I imagine that uh, O'Connor Power lost patience with him. And also, um, Parnell probably needed a bit more, more gentleness in, in the minding of him. But if you don't know the story of O'Connor Power, then you cannot possibly have a, a really good understanding of the life of David or the life of Charles Stuart Parnell. They were, they were intertwined. And uh, did he ever marry? He did marry. He married at the age of 47. He married uh, a woman called Avis. She was a widow. And uh, he married, and she was a, um, 
I think a Quaker. I can't actually pin it down, but I, I have sort of circled her. But she was highly intelligent, highly committed. She was certainly a nonconformist, I think. And she worked, a middle class woman who worked as a trained nurse with the work, in the working class hospital in, 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 in London with the poor. And she was still out and about until she was, you know, in her late 80s, 90s. She lived till 96. And uh, I, uh, I imagine that he probably knew her, her and her husband very well, because her husband was, was from um, a, a well-to-do background, but he also worked in the working class hospital as a surgeon. And uh, they, as I circled them trying to get information, uh, I, I came to like them enormously. And I felt that, and he married her 14 months after her husband died. So I felt he was probably a close family friend. She, had, she was a woman um, who had a lot of very clever uh, friends and uh, uh, who were also committed to uh, the suffragette movement and the liberal cause and, um, and to missionary work. And uh, a couple of her friends were graduates of Girton, which was the first uh, uh, college to grant degrees to women. So she was some, some lady. And you sh you've, you've shown in the book and in this interview how you need to understand John O'Connor Power to understand Parnell and Davitt and, and, and even others like Isaac But But I suppose if you were to ask people on the street about John O'Connor Power, they wouldn't know much about him. The name wouldn't ring, maybe wouldn't even ring a bell. <laughs> so what do you see as his great achievements, his great legacy to Irish history? Uh, I admired the fact that he, he was very visible for possibly two decades and then he, he lost visibility and I think that was as he, he worked with uh, Gladstone on, on land legislation and on, on, on home rule that he became invisible. Also, a lot of his colleagues couldn't understand why he was always in high society but of course he was pushing his agenda uh, in the press and... Uh, uh, and in um, in every nook and cranny of, of Irish of uh, British life to try and, and, and persuade them of, of the rightness of, of giving independence to Ireland and I think he made himself invisible but but also I think that that you have the same thing with the IRB and I think if you were to to find out about the IRB it wouldn't be a bad starting point to read the to read my book because it'll, it will illuminate that they always knew where they were going. They, they didn't drift and they seized every opportunity. And uh, O'Connor Parr uh, understood the diaspora. He was very well known in North America and he used the Irish in England, he used their vote uh, strategically to bring down Disraeli's government. Uh, British liberals who took the Home Rule Pledge uh, got the support of the Irish electorate. And, it, and they worked, he worked very closely with uh, the radicals. He, he, he was a radical. He, he and um, David were very close. Uh, so I think you, you can understand David and O'Connor Parr if you, if, you, if you look at the three or four of them together, and even Butt. Though I, I don't think Butt was a political strategist, uh, but they're greatly loved by everyone. OK, well, my thanks to Jane Stanford for talking to me about that Irishman, The Life of John O'Connor Power. It's published in paperback by the History Press Limited. It costs uh, $16.99 sterling, so about €20. Euro. And we'll be back with more Talking History on News Talk right after this. Talking History with Patrick Gagan. Thank you.